This is Kick-Ass News. I'm Ben Mathis. Hey folks, I recently had a very big milestone in my life. I decided to propose to my girlfriend, now fiancé, and when I did, I turned to adiamore.com for the perfect engagement ring. I shopped around, but no one beat adiamore.com for the best price and the very best quality. All of Adia Moore's diamonds are GIA certified, and their rings have a lifetime guarantee against material defects. Plus, Adia Moore even gives you 30 days to evaluate the deal and make sure that you're 100% happy with your purchase. That's because the folks at Adia Moore know that once you find a jeweler you can trust, you've got a jeweler for life and you'll keep coming back year after year. But don't take it from me. Check out their reviews on Yelp. And if you're shopping for an engagement ring, a wedding ring, or even a gift, even if you think you're going to buy from someone else, before you make that big decision, click on adiamore.com slash kick, look at their selection and compare. That's adiamore.com slash kick, A-D-I-A-M-O-R dot com slash kick. And now, enjoy the show. Hi. I'm Ben Mathis. Welcome to Kick-Ass News. Today I'm welcoming back to the show one of the nicest guys in show business, Louis Anderson. Named one of Comedy Central's 100 Greatest Stand-Up Comedians of All Time, Louis is one of the country's most recognized and adored comics, and he continues to tour, performing to standing-room-only crowds worldwide. He's a three-time Emmy winner, including an Emmy for Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series for his role as Christine on the show Baskets, now in its third season on FX. Louis bases Christine Baskets on his own mother, Orizella Anderson, and in many ways he says his role on Baskets is a tribute to her more than himself. After Orizella passed away 25 years ago, Louis began writing letters to her catching her up on his triumphs, disappointments, and continuing challenges, and asking her all the questions he wished he'd asked her when she was still alive. Now he's put those letters into a touching book titled, Hey Mom, Stories for My Mother, But You Can Read Them Too. He also has a stand-up special called Big Underwear, for which his mother and his whole family serve as a source of comedic inspiration. Today, Louis Anderson returns to the podcast to talk about how he's made a 30-year career out of mining the more poignant moments of his childhood for comedy. He shares some of the old-school comics who inspired him coming up, why he still loves one-liners, and some of the comedic expressions he borrowed from his parents. He reveals the questions that he'd most like to ask his mother and recalls the things that brought her the most joy from salt dishes to flea markets. He shares his regrets about times he says he could have been nicer to his mom, opens up about learning to forgive his abusive father and eventually himself, and he encourages everyone to get to know your parents while you still can. Plus, Louis Anderson on finally learning to eat healthy after 65 years, what he says to fans who fear a skinny Louis won't be funny anymore, and his curious connection to silent movie star Fatty Arbuckle, coming up in just a moment. I'm delighted to welcome Emmy-winning actor-comedian Louis Anderson back to the podcast. He has a new stand-up special called Big Underwear, premiering on April 3rd, and a new book titled Hey Mom, Stories from My Mother, But You Can Read Them Too. Louis, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you very much. It's so great to be here. How are you, Ben? Uh, I'm fantastic. It, it's probably been about a year since we did this, and since then, I, I was telling you my fiance and I saw your act at a supper club not too far from right where we are right now. Um, Turned out to be a good show. It was a great show. And you know who was there that night? Eddie Money. Eddie Money, singer. and I remember Chris Hardwick's mom. Oh, Chris I remember mom. pointing her yeah. out in the audience, yeah. You're right. It was a fantastic show. It was so much fun. She and I laughed our butts off, and it was a lot of fun for us, I think, to watch you working on the same material that eventually made it into this new special, Big right. Underwear, I think I was just see doing that evolve. I think yeah. I was just doing that, right, Ben? I, yeah, I, mean, I recognized I a, a lot, lot of, of the material. It was just, yeah, yeah, right. It yeah. was, uh, <clears throat> you know, because that's how you do a special. You have to hone the material. You have mm-hmm. to find out what jokes hold up. Yeah, uh, for six months. Yeah, how at long? Least. Oh, for six months. I six was going to say, how long does it take to come up with a tight a hour? 
<clears throat> six months to a year. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of work. <laughs> huh. You know, it's it's what I you know it's like uh, building a car, making yeah. a yeah. you know you know it's something I love. So yeah. to me, it's like, can I put this in? And this special, I wanted to be real jokey. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of jokes mm-hmm. in this special. Yeah, and I did it as an homage to the people who influenced me. Yeah, you know, Bob Hope, Rodney Dangerfield, Joan Rivers. They were all. They were and Henny Youngman. They were all yeah. joke tellers. Yeah, and, and that's a dying about, art. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think that. I mean, there aren't a lot of people doing that. The, the observational no, stuff, yes, right. but the the one liners and the Jack Benny, Bob yeah. Hope type stuff. I feel like you don't see that very much anymore. Well, Bob Hope had a big effect on me because that's why. That's how. I, yeah. That's that's my. <laughs> I have that. Yes. When I'm up on You've stage, I, 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 I had this. Uh, <laughs> hey, everybody, welcome. Joey Heather in here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and the, the facial expressions, certainly. I mean, you have this incredibly expressive face, I so I, I can definitely see some Jack Benny there. And Jonathan Winters was a big Winters, thing. I yeah. got a lot out of that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think my expressions were always there, and then maybe I got, I honed them a little, but. Mostly, I just really try to feel what I'm saying, and that seems to mm-hmm. translate well. I'm really for. I'm really lucky that my whole life, people have basically laughed at me when I talked, <laughs> and then I would say to them, "You know, I'm being serious," and then they would laugh even harder. And then I go, yeah. "I I can't win." <laughs> yeah, and I, I remember the last time we talked about. Uh, I guess it was Henny Youngman who mm-hmm. kind of sort of gave your your first break or yeah. inspired you. You won a contest or something. I like won. Th- that? I placed third. Yeah. He goes, "You should have won. You should have won. You should have won, <laughs> kid. If I would have picked, I would have picked you. You were the best." <laughs> Now, you, you much of your act talks about your family, your mother and your father. You also write about your mother in this book. What are some of the expressions and sounds that you got from your two parents? Well, <clears throat> from dad. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, Leah, hey. You know, my mom would say, I'll do, I'll tell you, I'll do, I'll talk as my mom and as my dad for you. Yeah, okay. You know, so my mom would go, Andy... Um, Monty and her husband are coming over. Well, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Louie, did you hear that Monty and her husband are coming over? <laughs> Stop the train. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and so I well, would hear that. that, and I would internalize that, I guess, yeah. and, it, and it turned out, and my mom was very lyrical. Louie... <laughs> Hmm, isn't that, oh. So she had a lot of uh, sing-songy stuff going yeah. on, and my dad had, uh, he was down there, yeah. mom was up there, you know. <laughs> oh. Uh. With both of them, it sounds like there was a lot behind those words. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> There's a lot you know, of subtext to I mean, everything. I think I came from two quite yeah. complicated, really bright parents who, you know, we weren't, they they weren't they weren't educated mm-hmm. uh, in school so much as they were educated in life. Mm-hmm. My mom had eleven children and married an alcoholic, and my father was a great musician, and yeah. his father Who, was a great was inventor, Hoagie Carmichael. Hoagie Carmichael, yeah, yeah, he was a trumpet a and coronet player. And so, I'm surprised that I was the only one who went into show business. To be honest with you, really, and no one's musical. Well, yeah, out of 11 kids. No one's musical the out of the there. 11 kids. Now, yeah. some of their children are. Oh, yeah? And so that's cool. Oh, wow. And, and, and I have a nephew, Josh Florhog, who's a very funny comedian. Who now, never is told. that a stage name? Yeah, I know. <laughs> or that's is that a, a real name? I said, what? I, you couldn't, you, 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 that's his real name. <laughs> okay. I, go, I don't know how you could, I, I, you know, I don't know what you say <laughs> you to can't that. can't make that up. But he's a lovely kid. Um, and so Josh... Never told anyone he was my nephew, really? my great nephew, but he never told anybody. He kind of did it on his own. Good for him. And uh, this uh, 
this month he's he's going to be in L.A. He's, I think he just got to L.A. In fact, oh no kidding! Yeah, I, he's performing in L.A. Yeah, well, he moved out here to be uh, to be a performer. Oh wow, yeah. good for him! Yeah. yeah, and and all without trying to work the nepotism angle, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I think he him. was smart because I'm so well known in Minnesota. It probably would have hampered him a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so much of your comedy actually is based around your family, especially your mom and your dad. And I think that's what makes it so good is because it is so relatable. I recognize the people you're talking about. I recognize the situations that you talk about. They're so familiar to me, I can picture them. You know, I'm just being me mm-hmm. is really, I mean, yeah. I, I am, I remember the night I stumbled on the fact that, you know, the family material, a guy was in the audience with his father and I said, Hey, is that your dad? And he goes, yeah. I go, yeah, I thought he was. Is it, do you guys get along good? He goes, yeah. Is he nice to you? Yeah. He ever hit you? No. I go, well, my dad never hit us. He carried a gun and that got a big laugh. And then I go, he never shot us. He just go. And I remember how that got a different laugh than anything else I was doing. You yeah. know, and then I started mocking my mom, Louie, <laughs> Louie, you know, she'd wake us up for breakfast, say it's Louie, <laughs> breakfast. And so I started uh, creating these characters uh, on stage in 1978 at Mickey Finn's Comedy Club on a dare. And all my family was there that night. So I really started out with. A bang, in a sense, because all my mm-hmm. friends were there and everybody enjoyed me. And I thought, I, I think I could do this. That's, you know, it was like I found out at the same time as everyone else that I could do something. Mm-hmm. The audience found out I could do it by laughing. And I found out I could do it by their laughing. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah. I go, yeah. oh, I wanted to say to them, and I mean, you know, this is all metaphorically, but I, there's more where that came from. <laughs> yeah. I, I think at some point, you said that a fellow comedian came up to you when you were starting out and gave you the advice, take the dark stuff and use it in a completely clean act and you'll have a hit. Right. He right. said, be clean uh-huh. and do your family stuff. Roman DeCare, a sweet guy, God rest his soul, who was a, who was, uh, he was like a um, Shriner and he was a really great guy and he did a little harmonica act and he would, had this tiny harmonica and blow on it. And then the sound would be, go, that's a sour note. And then he would take his hand out and a rubber pickle would pop out and go, Oh, that's a sour note. Oh, a pickle. And then he, it was just, it was just so silly. And he was a very sweet and yeah. a wonderful guy and a good friend. And I loved Roman. And I happened to be listening to him when he said it. And mm-hmm. it made sense to me. Being clean as a comic always fit me better. Really? Yeah, was it just, the Midwestern thing or what? I know. I wanted everybody to bring everyone in the family. And I knew that if I mm-hmm. was dirty that you wouldn't bring mom and you yeah. wouldn't bring dad and you wouldn't bring grandma and you wouldn't bring the kids. Yeah. I, I think I, I knew I appealed early on to a cross. You know, I was trying to, I think yeah. my whole life I've been trying to get my mom and dad to come and see me mm-hmm. in that sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think I've been just recreating yeah. that. I've been trying to get families together because I always yeah. wish my family would have been more together in one sense. Wow. Taking the tragic moments from your childhood and using that as comedic fodder, like he suggested, has worked out very well for you. In fact, you do a bit that's probably my favorite bit that you do, and I think it's a perfect example of this, where you talk about, making your mom a coupon book for Mother's Day or her birthday, oh, like yeah, we all yeah, do yeah. when we're kids. What were some of the coupons you put into mom's coupon uh, book? You know, so I did it in this way. I go, you know, my mom made a coupon book. I'll wash the dishes. I'll do the laundry. I'll kill dad for you. <laughs> and that just that just rang in my head as I knew that was going to be a big laugh, and it yeah. did turn out to be a laugh that I pay off later in the act. Right. And that's always important to me. Like, I always loved a callback, of mm-hmm. rev, you know, for yeah. – That's really – even early on, I, yeah. I, well, I always thought I should – 
start my act and end my act with the same yeah. joke with a different punchline. And even before that, one of the things that I love is the button that you go for at that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or what was it? Your mom Your mom says, no, Louie, you shouldn't Louis, do that. Louie, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. And I said, there's no expiration date on it. <laughs> you wouldn't kill your father, would you, Louie? I would for you, Ma. There's no expiration date on that coupon. <laughs> I love that bit. Yeah, it's it a really strong me. bit, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. mean I'm not bragging, but it isn't <laughs> a bit that I would normally that you would normally see in my act, right? And okay. that's the kind of stuff I like to throw in occasionally. Yeah. I'm really lucky to be uh, and humbled by how much I've been able to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So many, yeah. you know, I just I, it just keeps coming to me, yeah. and I'm already thinking about doing another special. Wow. So I just love, I love, you know, like people say, would you get like somebody this morning asked me, are you an actor or are you a comedian? You had to pick two. Huh. They gave, you know, it's like five, here's five things That's you have to tell me you. in 20 seconds, you yeah. know, that kind of a yeah. thing. <laughs> they go comedian or actor. I go comedian. Really? Yeah. Because I know, you know, when mm-hmm. I didn't get an acting job, when I didn't get a TV show, when I didn't get whatever I was doing. You could always go I, on the road again. I got, I yeah. could do stand up. Yeah. And I love doing yeah. stand up. It afforded me quite a life so far. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully you don't have to choose because your role as Christine baskets on FX series baskets has been such a blessing both for you and for the audience. You get tons of letters from people who've been touched by her and, feel this strange connection to your character and by extension to your mother who served as the inspiration for Christine or even maybe a connection to their own mother through your portrayal of your mother. Uh, What are some of the things that they say to you when they write to you or approach you? She reminds me, they say this to me, she reminds me of my mom or she reminds me of somebody that I knew Mm -hmm. or I would love Christine Baskets to be my mother. Um, I feel like I can, she makes me feel better about myself. She makes me feel like I can go on and those Mm -hmm. kind of things. And that's my mom. That's her unbelievable humanity, hopefulness and, uh, stamina as a human being. You know, my mom was so like, I didn't know that I, I really had a superstar as a mom. Yeah. I had a quiet performer. Or I, I guess I just had a quiet, special, like, my mom could have been an actress, I think. Really? My mom could have been a, a, a anything, really. She was very, yeah. she had a lot of charisma, and she lit up a room, and she always had a smile. Like, my dad would be mean to her till 3 in the morning, and at 7, she would be making us breakfast with a smile on her face. And it was really brave and wonderful and beautiful, really. Well, you've written this new book about your mom or to your mom called Hey Mom, which is a collection of letters you've written to your mom or Azella Anderson in the years following her death. As I read them, I could just picture you sitting in the kitchen while she was cooking up something great and you're asking her questions about life or just random curiosities or telling her the latest news in your life. Is that a pretty accurate picture? Yeah, you know, she could make anything special. Mm -hmm. She could make anything beautiful, and she could make anything seem possible. She just gave you hope. She gave you a straight hope. And she gave me this character that I'm just playing my mom. People think I'm being brilliant, and I'm trying to take myself out of the equation and put my mom in a pair of those shoes she wore in a dress that she might have loved to have, in a hat that might make her just the mm-hmm. belle of the Easter ball. And and uh, also, she is she sticks up for people. Mm-hmm. And she sticks up for those kids that she has, Christine does. Yeah. And my mom, stick, you know, she would stick up for us. Like, I did a joke early on in one of my specials. You know, you don't go home and get your dad when you're in trouble. You get your mom. She's 10 times tougher. Get out of here. He's getting his mom. She killed a bat yesterday. Yeah. You know, true. it's really true. Yeah. And yeah. my mom was much tougher in those situations. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Moms have to get things done. Yeah. Dads don't have those same responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Like moms have to take care of their kids. Mm-hmm. You know, dads, yeah, it's no changed. What. It's changed now. A lot of dads take care of their yeah. kids. But back then, that was it. Yeah. You know, you, you know, your, my, your mom had a hundred chores a day that were just about, you know, really like safety, taking care, mm-hmm. feeding, you know, all things that, you know, were important. Yeah. And I never realized it. And that's when I, that's why I wanted to write this book because when I started playing a mother and I, and I play a mother, I don't play a guy playing a mother. I'm playing a mother. Mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah. It's I not don't, Milton Berle in a dress. It's not, it's not a character. It's not a character at all. Yeah. I don't change my voice. I'm not trying to be cartoony. I'm, I am serious about my sons and taking care of them and my expectations. And something happens when I get there and when I get all that stuff on and I leave the makeup and hair trailer and the ward, wardrobes on, I leave Louie Anderson in that trailer. Mm-hmm. I treat everybody very like a mom on the set and I own that part as well as I can without breaking it, you know, yeah. without ruining it. We're going to take a quick break, and then I'll be back with more with comedian Louie Anderson when we come back in just a minute. If you're an entrepreneur, a small business owner, or even if you have a side gig, let me introduce you to Grasshopper, the entrepreneur's phone system. Grasshopper lets you run your business from your cell phone while keeping your business and personal lives separate. Choose from their huge inventory of local, toll-free, and vanity toll-free numbers. Simply forward your new number to your mobile phone and start taking calls immediately. Whether you're in an office, in your car, or out shopping, Grasshopper's iPhone and Android apps help you stay connected to your customers. Not to mention, you can send and receive calls and texts from your business phone number, set up multiple extensions for everyone on your team, get your voicemails transcribed and emailed to you, Work from anywhere with call forwarding, make and receive calls from your computer via the desktop app, and even utilize Wi-Fi calling. Better yet, Grasshopper offers easy and instant setup and 24-7 customer support, all without any long-term contracts. Grasshopper, sign up today. Go to grasshopper.com slash kick to get $20 off your first month. That's grasshopper.com slash kick. Listen up, millennials and serial procrastinators. When you're young and you're fresh out of college, you've got your hands full with the day-to-day stuff. You're focused on getting a job, dating, paying your rent, which doesn't leave much room for thinking about the long term. But you got to grow up sooner or later, at least a little bit, and that means thinking ahead and protecting the things that matter to you. Did you know that 71% of people say they need life insurance, but only 59% have coverage? That means at least 12% of people are procrastinating. And sure, normally procrastinating is a bad thing. But if you've been avoiding getting life insurance, congratulations, because while you were procrastinating, Policy Genius was making life insurance easier. Policy Genius is the easy way to compare life insurance online. You can compare quotes in just five minutes. And let's be honest, when it's that easy, putting it off becomes a lot harder. You can compare quotes while sitting on the couch watching TV. You can compare quotes while listening to this podcast. Policy Genius has helped over 4 million people shop for insurance and placed over $20 billion in coverage. And they don't just make life insurance easy, they also compare disability insurance, renter's insurance, and health insurance. If you care about it, they cover it. So if you need life insurance but you've been putting it off because it's too confusing or you don't have the time, check out Policy Genius. It's the easy way to compare top insurers and find the best value for you. There's no sales pressure and zero hassle. And best of all, it's free. PolicyGenius.com. When it's easy to compare life insurance, why put it off? And now, back to the podcast. When your mom passed away, I guess it's about 25 years ago now. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You were left with a lot of questions about her and wanting to know who she was, I think. Uh, has playing this role brought you closer to her and maybe helped you understand her better? Yeah. I mean, you know, one of the things I, I realized is, God, my mom, she did everything. She took care of me really great. And she had a lot of 
you know, she lost five children. She had five right. other children that were born dead or died soon after. And I think all that loss and still, you know, she still had so much responsibility and so much to do. And I wish that I would have been more, I wish I would have known that really? as a kid, yeah. as a young adult, and even as an adult. I think I was just, I should have been nicer to my mom. And I, I, I really want this book for people to, so that they, if they had the opportunity, they could do what I was not able to do. They could get mm -hmm. those questions that you're talking yeah. about answered. Because I think that's a valuable thing. I think that's yeah. the most valuable thing. Yeah, to get to yeah, know why your not? parents. Yeah, and I say, no don't excuse. go and ask your parents 100 questions. <laughs> go and be friends with them. Because okay. that's what you know. Yeah. We grow up. And we, yeah, we treat them like an interrogation. Once we become adults, we no longer we no longer treat our parents the same way as we, we should become yeah. friends with them. Mm -hmm. They know everything about us. <laughs> why not just why not become friends? Yeah. Don't think that they don't know everything that's made you tick. They help develop it. Yeah. So I think it's really important to become friends and ask them, like, what did you see in dad? What was it like when you first met him? Mom, mom, when you brought me home and I was the 10th kid, was I just like a sack of potatoes by then? Oh, or right. Did, yeah. Yeah. The you know, yeah. The Where do you yeah. fall? <laughs> Is it still precious? Yeah. yeah. Um, what would be the question you most want to get answered from your mom? I guess, how did you feel? How did it feel to be in that situation where you had that horrible husband mm -hmm. and you had all those children? How did you deal with all that? How did you... Where did you find your strength? Where did yeah. you, who'd you get that from? Was yeah. that your mother? Was that your father? What, what, what happened there? Yeah. And then I just want to ask her, uh, quite honestly, um, what she didn't get to do hmm. that she wished she could have done. I think you also wanted to know why she didn't leave your alcoholic and abusive father. Was it just that that was what women did in those days? And I mean, with I mean, the 11 kids, think, you're kind of. I mean, baked well, who's going to take in 11 kids? <laughs> yeah. We had no religious affiliation. <laughs> right. So that's okay. out. Yeah. There weren't really shelters True. then. Yeah. You know, like there are now, thank mm -hmm. goodness. Yeah. And uh, she had no relatives that she could go to. She had no, wow. you know, she couldn't bring. Where was she? Where is she going to bring 10 children? Mm -hmm. And I think she was the type of person who said, I'm going to prevail. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad quit drinking when he was 69, and she turned to me and said, I told you he'd quit. <laughs> and I go, oh, my God. I mean. That's perseverance. I mean, that was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what I thought. Yeah. And I just thought, well, maybe she did win out. Yeah. Do you think that she experienced depression? Because everything that you've ever told me about her, it, it yeah. sounds like I maybe she, quietly she did, but yeah. somehow it never showed. I think she always had a sadness about her. Mm -hmm. And I think our family has a sadness about them. Because yeah. when you, alcoholism is like uh, radiation poisoning mm -hmm. is what I, you know, it's there, uh, but it doesn't manifest until later mm, like yeah. you you feel a dread that you know because when you grow up you, when you come home and your family is an out if somebody's an alcoholic or a drug addict your first thing when you get home is to find out is he drinking mm -hmm. is he doing drugs yeah. how is he today we know all these little codes in our families mm -hmm. i think you carry some of that stuff around with you oh, and yeah, so i had to work sure. very hard to I had to do a lot of therapy and I had to do a lot of, you know, I can only I, imagine to, to shed myself of that. Yeah. And it's still, it's still sometimes right around the corner. Yeah. But you know, um, one of the things I lost my brother, Tommy. And one of the things when that happened, I said, I'm gonna live every day. Like it's, uh, my last day. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that hasn't been my, I never really thought like that, but when mm -hmm. he, I lost him, I said, Oh, this, I, I've got to do as much as I can to, yeah. to get everything I want done. And that's why I've been so productive with the special. And I, I said, I'm going to do another special. I'm going to get this book done. I'm going to I'm gonna kill this role I'm in. Yeah, make every moment count, yeah. for sure. And tell everyone you love them. Yeah, especially yeah. tell everyone you love them. I've always been pretty good about that. But, really? 
yeah. I, you know, like sometimes I'll just, you know, like I want to sign emails, love Louie, because I know that's the predominant thing. But, you know, in business, it's probably not the best thing. So yeah. I have to be careful. That's so all you do a lot of thank you. Thank yeah. you, Louie. And- uh, you know, I don't know. It might, might, maybe it's you or it's someone else, but I feel that at one point you signed a letter to me, love Louie. I bet I did. I, it, maybe I'm imagining it or I'm, no, I'm I don't having think it mixed that's up probably, with someone I, else. I, I, it's probably true. I feel like that well, might you know, have if, if I yeah. sent you a letter or sent you an a email. Note, if you sent was, me something. It would have been an email, I think. Yeah. If you sent me something uh, that was heartfelt, uh, I would definitely yeah. answer, you in, answer you in a heartfelt way. Wow. I answer all okay. my Emails today, you know, because mm-hmm. like, people can write me at Louis at louieanderson.com. Yeah. And I answer the emails. Sometimes it's just, hey, thank you so much, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Louie. And sometimes it's love, Louis. And sometimes, you know, I'm interested in what people are trying to, you know, and, and I try to give them advice. Mm-hmm. And my advice is always really from the heart. And, you know, I feel like people don't, uh, they get lost in their mm-hmm. own selves. Yeah. And they don't work hard enough. Like, you know, I know you, I knew you had to really work hard to get this going. This would not be easy to get a podcast because I do a podcast and I, and it goes back and forth. This is a, a really, you have to work at doing a good job on a podcast because you have to get back. African villages here, but (laughs) no, but that isn't the, that's not the point. Yeah. If it's something, if you, what I want to say to people, because a lot of the letters are, you know, uh, I w- really want to break into show business, and I'm mm-hmm. like, well, how hard are you working at it? I don't know about mm-hmm. you, Ben, but I work seven days a week yeah. at becoming a comic. I did as many shows as I could. Mm-hmm. I work all the time. I'm yeah. always, you know, I probably work yeah, too you much. you keep quite a schedule. Yeah, I like yeah. it, though, you know. I read that once you got, a, a, I think, a letter from the mom of an aspiring comedian asking you to write him and try to talk him out of it, right? right. <laughs> what did you say to her? I never answered it. Oh, really? And I you never, never wrote the it. letter to him? I never got it. Oh, okay. I got it after she died. Oh, Somebody really? Sent no it kidding. To me. Yeah, it's in my <laughs> new book that I'm going to work on yeah. after this one about showbiz. I'm okay. going to write a book about my oh, show wow. business career. Oh, fantastic. Because, you know, I've had so many good stories, you know. Yeah. I got to meet, you know, everyone. I got to meet a lot of the greats, and I got yeah. to work with a lot of people. I got yeah. to open for a lot of people. And maybe I could leave some advice behind mm-hmm. that would be worthwhile. Yeah. Now, how was the experience of writing this book for your mom compared to writing Dear Dad? Well, Dear Dad was a necessity, Mm -hmm. and Mom was a joy. Okay. Because the necessity, well, they were both necessities in a sense, but Dear Dad was me trying to forgive my father, which was very successful. I had to still work at it, but the book broke open a big, it really, it took a lot of that blanket off me. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and I was able to forgive him. He had a much harder life than he gave me, even though my dad was so brutal. He still was a better person than his father was. Really? Huh. Yeah. His childhood was miserable, horrible, terrible. Huh. He was taken away from his family and put up for adoption. And, right, right. You know, just had horrible stuff. So when I wrote this to my mom, this is, that was a 20-something I guess thirty something year old kid writing to his father. Mm-hmm. This is a sixty some year old man who loved totally his mother and respected her mm-hmm. and is playing her writing a book to her. <laughs> That's a, a little confusing different. when you yeah. say it like that. I know, but it's true though. <laughs> yeah. Hey mom. I mean, the first letter that I wrote, you know, was, yeah. hey, by the way, I'm playing you on TV and people mm-hmm. seem to really love it, <laughs> you know, or something like that. You know, I don't. Uh, were these written in real time or were they written? They're written right on here. You could look okay. through my, uh, I won't, oh, really? I won't let you, but, <laughs> but I'll just show you, you know, like on my phone, you know, oh, I, wrote, okay. I would get wow. the idea for the letter yeah. and I would just go, hey, mom, yeah. everybody wants to be a big yeah. shot. And then I would go back and write the letter. Yeah. I would get the yeah. idea. So your mom Whatever. was kind of your diary. She was kind of sense. a diary, but, yeah. you know, uh, I just got that this stuff just started channeling to me. Mm-hmm. That's how I write anyways. I feel like I have to write it down because I won't remember it. Yeah. Because it's yeah. almost the like, same way. yeah. And if you, everyone you, is. you should, everyone, yeah. everyone should write it down, though, is yeah. what I'm saying to him, because eventually it could become something important to you. It's like jokes. If you get a good joke, you, you know. 
You have to remember it. It's hard mm-hmm. to remember jokes otherwise. Yeah. Is it hard to remember jokes on stage? I've always no. wondered that. No? I have a memory, a photographic memory really? for jokes. Really? Once I are huh. my jokes, they're my jokes. Okay. Like, you know, I can remember almost every joke I've ever done. No kidding. Mm. Wow. Now, you say that many times you wish that you had been kinder to your mom. Yeah. And there's some apologies in this book for different things. What what are some of the things that you feel some regret about? I just wish I would have been a better, nicer kid to my mom, a nicer son. But I had a lot of opportunity. (laughs) I know, but that doesn't mean that I shouldn't have been. Yeah. But, like, you know, I was mean to her about something she wore once at the White House. And that was so, that was just me being a spoiled entitled you know embarrassed i was embarrassed for her but it wasn't even true Mm -hmm. you know when i look back at what it was it was very similar to something christine would wear okay and so i go you know i just want to so mad at myself for doing that and regret that so much but you know somebody said something to me yesterday or the day before um when i said this they said you know the good thing is moms don't have memories for that stuff it seems they like that's true. They have to let it go. They, yeah. have to, they don't take it personal because yeah. they know you're a little mm-hmm. shit. Now, you talk about that, and also, I guess at one point, you were a bit of a diva on Family Feud. The Louis that you describe in parts of this book is totally unrecognizable from the Louis I see. I see such a kind, empathetic person with so much self-awareness. We talked about learning to forgive your father. At this point, have you started to learn to forgive yourself by yeah, now? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, that comes with, you know, that, that, you know, I, I, that self-awareness that, mm-hmm. you know, you have to get and, um, you have to work at it. I read a lot of reading, a lot of meetings. I went to a lot of therapy and a lot of good friends who, you know, said, Hey, this might be a different way of thinking about things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I, you know, when people mistreated me, I go, am I doing that? You talk about the meetings and you talk about your struggle that both you and your mom have dealt with, which is food addiction, as well as other addictions, I guess. Um, You say that you wish you hadn't waited until 64 to start eating healthy. How's that been going for you? you, Well, it's hard for me still. Yeah, no, it's good. I'm, you know, I still am not compulsively eating. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, like you had snacks out there and I did, I had two things that would be helpful to me. That would be help me because I'm hungry. It's like definitely little not meal. the worst snacks in the basket. Yeah, <laughs> there were Snickers. No, and I all didn't kinds take of any cookies. of those. <laughs> I took the protein bar and the yeah. cheese and crackers because they're food products. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And yeah. I needed something. Yeah. And, but I w- might have in my compulsive days eaten four packages. Yeah. Of those cheese and crackers or oh, four really? of those bars. Yeah. Because what that's about what the compulsive... M&M's? Aren't M&M's your weakness I or do not love, anymore? <laughs> I do love M&M's. Yeah. I love M&M's. I love peanut M&M's. Uh, yeah. yeah. I love a, too. peanut M&M's in a bowl of vanilla ice yeah. cream <laughs> with a little chocolate on top. It, well, I mean, I guess there's some hope in that, you know, you've dealt with addiction all your life. You've beat drugs. You've beat right. drinking, gambling, and smoking. If right. you can do those... There's still hope that you can get over food, or, or do you think that the hardest food part is the hardest over, one? Yeah, food's the hardest one because really? you have yeah. to still eat food. Right, you can't just you can't, yeah, just you can't get away from, from it. it. Yeah, you that's true. You die. You gotta, yeah, you got to eat. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And so that's always huh. the weirdest. That's the weirdest thing yeah. in the world. I think you said that you actually eat less after you have a good show, huh? That's true. It's so funny. I said, you know, if you guys were just a little laughing a little more, I wouldn't have to have any ice cream tonight, <laughs> you know, because I just really equate, yeah. you know, all that stuff to what you're trying to make up for. Mm-hmm. And in my family, you know, you were we my mom would feed us after my dad had a tantrum, mm-hmm. you know, where, we were, where he was mean to everybody. My mom would interesting would comfort us with food, which is okay. really so you were kind of psychologically trained that yeah, way. Well, I mean, physically and yeah. psychologically, yeah. you know, wow. and I can, huh. I can find my when things are really stressful for me, I want to turn to in eating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, do you ever encounter people who say? We don't want you to lose weight. Yeah, you know, lots of uh, skinny Louie yeah. won't be funny. Yeah, it's you know it might be true. I might not no, be funny, I but I mean <laughs> those are the very common. That's a very yeah. common. Hey Louie, what if you lose weight, you won't be funny? And I always try to just say to them, um, you know, like I used to try to to educate people, but I don't anymore. Yeah, I just go. 
Uh, well, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Well, I mean, your jokes you are generally la- I about lash out a lot of things. Do you're it. Not, yeah, you're yeah. not just a, a fat joke or a food comedian. Yeah, I no, mean, Jim I'm Gaffigan not. tells well, more food jokes than you do. Yeah. Well, you know, the truth is, is that, you know, I only had about 10 minutes of fat jokes ever really? in my life. Yeah. But um, people remember them, so, you know, they really resonate with mm-hmm. people. And they're easy to remember. You right. Know? It's and so they kind of get that that yeah. idea. But you're right. The majority of my jokes are about people and about yeah. family. They're not about food. And they're not about being fat. Of course, apparently you have this strange connection to Fatty Arbuckle. <laughs> I was <laughs> born on same the same birthday. day. Didn't you have a psychic who told, a psychic it, told you told you were the reincarnation of Fatty Arbuckle? Yes. <laughs> a psychic told me I was a reincarnation of Fatty Arbuckle <laughs> and that I was here to make things right for him. Well, I think it things is a project turned out better I've, for you than they turned out for him. That's it something. is a project <laughs> I've tried to... Oh really? To get going, yeah, but it's no, an but interesting story. It is. It, it it might work. You know, we have a rating system because of Fatty Arbuckle. I don't think people well, realize right. that. You're right, right, because yeah. the the Fatty Ar- Arbuckle scandal was started the Hayes, yeah, the Hayes, yeah, because uh, every group, yeah, the Hayes group, because they thought Hollywood was just Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah, and well, they started to collapse. Much, I think. Yeah, it probably yeah. was in the twenties. I think it was <laughs> early on. Uh, I, I wonder what would your mom say about Trump? Oh. What would she say? He's such a blowhard, I think she would say something like that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's the worst thing my mom would ever say about anyone. Uh, okay. <laughs> but, he's, you know, she'd go, I'd like his hair, though. <laughs> I know my mom. She, he seems, he's got a very nice tan. <laughs> All right, okay. mom. She it, always found the good in everybody, really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, my dad always found the bad. Yeah, what would he have said? He probably would have been Look at him, look at him, look (laughs) at him. Ah, He was never in a war. Oh, really? So he would, he he seems like a guy who would have been a supporter, uh, you know, been one of his. I don't think so. I think, well, no, my dad was a big, you know, we're we're big Democrats from Minnesota. Oh, okay. We're Hubert Humphrey people. Mm -hmm. We were poor. Farm Democrats. We're poor. My dad was a veteran, a a, uh, World War II wounded veteran and so my dad was all about the veterans and all mm-hmm. about the democrats yeah well before we go since orazella and christine have developed such a following i'm sure a lot of people would be curious to hear what were your mom's greatest joys the little things or the big things that just brought her delight she loved little salt dips that salt. you put salt in so you could put your radish in okay. it, your <laughs> own individual yeah. salt dip yeah. that that you could put a radish in and bite and put more <laughs> and get your salt and do that. Or you, she loved those onions, the, the scallions were they? Yeah, yeah. The ones with the thing, and she put them in. And she okay. loved, you she like loved those trays. salt dips. Yeah. She loved the 88 cent store, which is before the 99 cent store. We had an 88 cent <laughs> I didn't store. Know. I never Look heard of Look at this, that. Louis. 88 cents. <laughs> Look at these, Louie, two yeah. for 88. <laughs> you know, I can remember her doing that. And mm-hmm. she loved beautiful things. She loved mm-hmm. beautiful glassware and antiques. Mm-hmm. And she loved oriental rugs. She loved all really? those things. And you know what else she loved? I remember when I did The Tonight Show, um, she wanted to know what the material of the curtain was. <laughs> <laughs> the tonight she show goes, what curtain? do you think that is? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember when I was about, they were going to part the curtain. Yeah. I remember reaching out beforehand and touching it so I could tell her <laughs> what the curtain was like. What was it? Uh, it was like a silky, beautiful curtain. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it did. It looked much better on TV than it did in person. Yeah. Lighting will do that. Too. Yeah. That's I look true. much better if I'm lit well. <laughs> and swap meets. She loves uh-huh. swap meets. She loves it. She, <laughs> like, she We'd go there and she would leave with more stuff than she came with. <laughs> yeah. Go, she, Mom, she came. She it, got a booth this, and came yeah. to sell, right? And she would go out, watch the booth. I'm going to see if there's any good deals around. <laughs> and she'd go and buy stuff. She was a very smart, wonderful woman with, oh. a, with a huge heart. And she gave me this opportunity. I don't know how it all happened. If I didn't know better, I think she was involved with getting this part to me. And, uh, you know, I always thought I'd play my dad in some sitcom or movie or TV show. Yeah, you you would think so. But 
I ended up playing my mom. And yeah. it was the right choice. Mm-hmm. And Jimmy Kimmel said at the Emmys, I never thought I'd say that Louis Anderson was my favorite TV mom. <laughs> and so that was a really nice thing. That's a great then, compliment. You know, those are the kind of things. Yeah. You know, that are so wonderful that I think I'm a, you know, I feel like I'm on a show like it must have been with the rest of development where they mm-hmm. made it and then people didn't watch it necessarily. They canceled mm-hmm. it and then they brought it back. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like people are just discovering baskets mm-hmm. and discovering Christine. Yeah. And I don't think they understand it when people tell them about it. But I think once they see Christine, they fall in love with her. Mm-hmm. And well, God bless Orizella Anderson and God bless Louie Anderson. God bless you, Ben. The book is called Hey Mom, Stories for My Mother, but you can read them too. And Louie's stand-up special called Big Underwear is available April 3rd on, let's see if I have this right, Amazon, Comcast, DirecTV, AT&T, Dish, iTunes, Charter, Google Play, and other platforms. So and if you, if have you a really can't good get it, you're not trying teeth. hard enough. If you have a really good, you can pick it up on a <laughs> molar. <laughs> well, Louis, you are a mensch. It's been so fun. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Ben. Hey, this is Louis Anderson. I'm on Kick Ass News. I've been waiting to do that. Uh, actually, this is my second time because it's so kick ass. <laughs> you're the greatest, man. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thanks again to Louie Anderson for coming on the podcast. Order his book, Hey Mom, Stories for My Mother, but you can read them too on Amazon or download the audiobook at audible.com. And watch his new stand-up special, Big Underwear, on Amazon, Comcast, DirecTV, AT&T, Dish, iTunes, Charter, Google Play, and many other platforms. For Louie's upcoming stand-up dates and more, visit louieanderson.com and follow him on Twitter at at Louis Anderson. I also want you to check out adiamore.com slash kick for a huge selection of diamonds and jewelry. I recently bought my engagement ring from Adiamore, and my fiancé couldn't be happier. I shopped around, but no one beat Adiamore for the best price and the very best quality. You can go on their site and try different diamonds with different settings until you come up with the perfect ring for you or the woman you love. All of Adia Moore's diamonds are GIA certified, and their rings have a lifetime guarantee against material defects. Plus, Adia Moore even gives you 30 days to evaluate the deal and make sure that you're 100% happy with your purchase. That's because the folks at Adia Moore know that once you find a jeweler you can trust, you've got a jeweler for life and you'll keep coming back year after year. So do yourself a favor. If you're shopping for an engagement ring or even a nice gift, even if you think you're going to buy from another dealer, before you make that big decision, you owe it to yourself to click on adiamore.com slash kick, look at their selection and compare. That's adiamore.com slash kick, A-D-I-A-M-O-R dot com slash kick. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Kick-Ass News on iTunes and leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook or on Twitter at at kickassnewspod. And as always, I welcome your comments, questions, and ideas at comments at kickassnews.com. I'm Ben Mathis, and thanks for listening to Kick-Ass News. Kick-Ass News is a trademark of Mathis Entertainment, Inc.